I used to sing on the deacon board when I was a deacon for a short period of time. Deacon Moses sings it all the time, but the song says, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So you know that the song. everybody praise the lord everybody oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together anybody glad to be in the house of the lord this morning come on if you glad to be in the house of the lord won't you just give the lord a wave offering this morning come on won't you open up your mouth and just say god i love you god we thank you we magnify you there's nobody like him come on clap those hands for jesus all over this place Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Listen, it is Easter Sunday. It is Easter Sunday. And on this good Easter Sunday, we have some candidates for baptism this morning. Can you all bless the Lord? 
they're going in the water and this is a declaration of an inward decision it's an outward expression of an inward decision to follow Christ and it's a reminder to the enemy that you still are defeated amen so listen I only have one rule one rule that when they go down and they come up we go crazy the Bible says that when one comes to Christ that all of heaven stops and they begin to celebrate so we're gonna make this room sound like heaven can you do that come on can you do that for them can you celebrate their life as they're coming back to Christ hallelujah at this time Reverend Jones is coming with scripture and prayer our scripture reading this morning will be coming from the, the book of Acts it will be coming from the second chapter, the 36th through the 39th verse. And it reads as thus. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut into the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brother, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God has called, or will call. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this experience this morning. We thank you for our coming to be part of this presentation, God. Uh, we pray that it would allow us to be filled with the spirit of your holiness as we leave this place. God, we ask that you look upon these candidates, God. Touch them with your finger of love. Crown them, O oh God, with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Let their guardians, O oh God, be over them, O oh God, to be a word in them, O oh God, to be able to spread abroad and even to the us, the, this recipients, God. We pray now, O oh God, as they come to the water of baptism, God, that you be with them. Guide them, O oh God. Give them a spirit of hope and posterity. And God, we pray, God, let us overlook them, O oh God. Nurture them in peace and in admiration and fear of Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water to be baptized. Come on, move home. Put your hand together. Oh, take me to the water. Water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water to be baptized. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I know I got religion. I know I got religion. I know I got relief. Yes, I do. In obedience to the head of the church, we do now baptize Sister Taylor Shackelford in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Come on, tell us, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. Oh, Lord. Whoa. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. To be baptized. Oh, Lord. Religion. I know I got religion. I know I got religion. 
Yes, I do. We do now baptize Sister McKenya Harris in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the precious Holy Ghost. I know I got religion. I know I got religion. Yes, I do. Oh, and I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. But one more time. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. To be baptized. We do now baptize Sister Ashley Calhoun in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the precious Holy Ghost. Take me to the water. Oh, take me to the water to be baptized. Now come on, New Hope, let's have a little church in here. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water to be baptized. Oh, I know I got religion. I know I got religion. I know I got religion. Yes, I do. Now, how many of you love him today? Lift your hands. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I sure do. Come on, everybody. Just put your hands together. Come on now, put those holy hands together so the dead shall be risen with Christ. Come on, clap those hands all over this room. Celebrate every life that has come back to Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. There is no other God like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, why do you come here looking among the dead for the living? Now look, find somebody else, look at them and say, neighbor, he is risen. Come on, put those holy hands together. We have a risen Savior. It's Easter Sunday, such a beautiful Sunday. It is a Sunday where we stop to remember what Christ did for us. A lot of, there's a lot of gods and there's a lot of things to worship, but there's only one that died, took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And then not only that, not only did he die, but he would get up with all power. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I serve a risen savior. 
I'm glad he died one Friday and I'm glad he stood there just for me. Yeah. Yeah. So today, today we're going to stop to honor the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our great God. And I want you to, I know we're tight, but I want you to forget about your fancy outfit. I want you to forget about the religious activities that we usually do. I want you to forget about your Facebook post for a moment. And I just want you to come into the sanctuary with a clear mind and a clear conscience, a clear heart to worship a one true living king. I want this place to be an encounter. Can that be our prayer today, Holy Ghost, that you would fall on us, fall on us afresh. God, won't you do a new thing in this place? Father, whatever you do, won't you do it here at New Home Mountain Megs? Won't you come and throw your weight around? I'm looking for the thirsty people that want to drink from the well this morning. I'm looking for the thirsty people that came to New Home Mountain Megs to get what they needed from the Father. As we lift him up, he said, if I be lifted up, then I'll draw all men unto me. Father, draw us to the well this morning. May we drink from the well of living water. May we never thirst again. May the Holy Ghost fall in this place. You still looking at me waiting for something to happen. He's waiting on you. He said, when praises go up, he'll inhabit the praises of his people. He's waiting on the sound. Let there be a sound in the earth. May there be a sound. A sound that gets heaven attention. They say, God, we need you. We need you in the earth. We need you in the earth. We need a savior. Come on, new home. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Let the king of kings hear you. Let the king of kings hear you. He's waiting on your sound. Let there be a sound. Come on. Come on. On the string instrument, David prayed and they got healed. They opened up their mouths and they got healed. When Jehoshaphat didn't have anything to say, he said, I worship him. I worship him for God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him. How in spirit and in Cut the music. Cut the music, let the people praise him. He's waiting on your sound. I know he's been too good to you. I know he's been better than that. Let the people praise him. Woo. This next sound is for my babies. This next sound is for your marriage. Come on, on the count of three, I want you to release a sound that say, after all the hell I've been through, I still got a hallelujah. One, two, three, open up your mouth. Yeah. 
praise you. We love you. We praise you. We love you. We praise you. We praise you. We love you. We praise you. We love you. We praise you. We love you. We praise you. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Come on. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Are you lifting up? 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 We lift the name on high. today. I need you to jump up on your feet real quick. I said I need you to jump up on your feet real quick. Look at the neighbor. Say neighbor. We came to lift him up. Now put your hands together. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Yeah. How you lift it? How you lift it up? How you lift it up? How you lift it up? Now come on, Shabbat the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. I need y'all to do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, you look good today. Find somebody else say, I see you looking. Like you looking. But I need you to help me lift him. He got up. Y'all give God the best praise you can give him. Early Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, Hallelujah. We're moving. Y'all may be seated. Y'all may be seated. There's a lot that we're dealing with today because God is going to allow them to minister in many different ways. Um, and I believe we are, I believe we're ready for our young people. Are they ready? New Gen? The young people ready? Amen. As he's checking, I need you to make sure you speak to somebody on your road you ain't spoke to yet. Y'all not ready? Not yet? Oh, right. Okay, I got you, got you. Amen. Speak to somebody you ain't seen before, because some of y'all love to holler you an introvert, but you talk to everybody else. Talk, talk to somebody on your own. Stop, act, stop acting like you acting. Amen. Amen. It's Easter. I know you hot. You know, you close to folk and stuff. You trying to make sure you don't get musty. We approve you to have musty worship today. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what you smell like. We're going we gonna to lift up the name of Jesus. I know y'all close. Some of y'all been arguing already. Uh-uh, you got you to gotta squeeze when you sit down. It's okay. It's okay. That's a good problem. We're we going to be better after a while. Amen. But it's important that we continue to be a church that embraces each other. 
Amen. So we got to speak to somebody we don't know. At this time, put your attention to the screens right after this moment. Any first time, second time visitors in the house today, can you stand to your feet? I ain't going to make you talk. I just want to see you. First time, second time visitors. Come on, let's make some noise for them. What's up, bro? Hallelujah. Come on, let's make some noise. We got first timers in overflow. Y'all make some noise for the folk in overflow. Hey. So we are excited. We're excited for all of our visitors. You could have been anywhere worshiping this morning. We're grateful you came to worship with us. You might be squeezed and you in a tonight uh, space, as the old folk would say. But we're grateful that you came to worship. Uh, I, I pray and I see some of y'all look like y'all dressed down. You know, I saw a few J's, but then I saw some J. Renee. Is that what y'all wear still? Y'all don't, don't wear J. Renee's. Louboutin. That's what it is. Oh, no, I ain't buying nothing. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but y'all looking good today. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see all of these beautiful people in the house of the Lord. And so we're going to lift up the name of Jesus even further. We thank God for our visitors. As I said, I pray something is sung, something is said that will encourage you to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. At this moment, I want you to put your attention to the screens for our news and announcements. Streaming now. This is New Home News. Welcome to New Home Mount Megs, the home where we embrace, empower, and employ. You can join us every Sunday at 7 a.m. live on 96.5 at 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. for our worship services. Now you can join us on TV live on the CW updated time at 11 a.m. Join us every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. as we continue to dive into the book, I Believe, by Tom S. Rayner at 6.30 p.m. New Home Improvement via New Home Strong Virtual Facebook Group. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Today, on Resurrection Sunday, we welcome each and every one of you. Pals, there will be a meeting April 2nd via Zoom. If you cannot attend, please send a representative in your place. April 6th through May 5th, there will be a canned food drive. If you'd like to donate, please see Sister Michelle Peterson in the foyer. Thank You Color is coming April 12th. You don't want to miss this good time. On April 14th, the youth ministry will have a team hangout where you can get hands-on ministry training and lunch will be provided immediately after service. Our Next Steps new members class, cohort number two, will be happening for the first time April 20th as a one-day class. If you've joined the church and you'd like to participate in this class and you haven't participated, join us April 20th. Upcoming a father-daughter dance. Stay tuned. New Home Mount Megs is a church that loves to reach you where you are. So stay connected with us for all of these updates, scheduling of events, and so much more via our website at newhomemountmegs.org or you can follow us at New Home Mount Megs on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube on demand. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for the AV team. As our officers are taking their position, it is time to give. Whatever you are purposing your heart to give unto the Lord, this is the moment for you to do so. Uh, you ought to have that same smile on your face that you had two seconds ago. Uh, because God says we all can't give of the same quantity, but we can give of the same quality. God loves a cheerful giver. So as you give, give cheerfully unto the Lord at this time. Jesus is real. I know. Oh, 
is real. Hey, Jesus is real. I know, I know, the Lord he is real. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Hey, sometimes when I'm feeling down, no one around Jesus is a friend that I found. Jesus is real. Yeah. Jesus is real. I know the Lord. I'm telling the truth. I know the Lord is real. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, Lord. Sometimes when I'm feeling down, no one around. Jesus is a friend that I found. <laughs> Jesus is real. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, help us. Say, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. I know. I'm telling the truth. I know the Lord is real. Say, Oh, 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 sometimes when I'm feeling down, no one around. She lives in the ring. I'm glad I found. Say, hey, hey, she lives real to me. Hey, say he real, real. Real, oh yes, he real. I know he is. I know he is. I know that he is. Yes, he's real. Help me say yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he's real. I know he is. I know he is. I know that he is. Yes, he's real. Let me say yeah. 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 Anybody know he's real? Anybody know he's real? Lift your hand and say, I know. Oh, I know he is. I know he is. I know that he is. Yes, he's far I know. Uh, far I know. Yeah. Far I know. I know that he is. Jesus is. Come on, everybody, one more time. Put your hand together. Right? He's real. He's real. Real, real, oh yes, he is. I know he is. I know he is. I know that he is. New home, do me a favor. Everybody, clap your hands. Everybody, clap your hands. How many of you know he's real? Just say yeah one more time. Help me say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, he's real. I know that he is. I know that he is. I know that he is. Yes, he's real. Say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lift your hand, lift your hand, lift your hand. All over the building.
Repeat after me. Say, Lord, with a cheerful heart, I show my seed. Today, I planted in good ground. I believe my needs are met. And my family is blessed. Somebody shout, I'm expecting a supernatural harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time. Listen, this morning, our kids, they have worked tirelessly. They worked hard uh, to present to you their Easter production. And so as they grace the platform this morning, I want you to put your biggest smile on you. Let me see your biggest smile. Yeah. Yeah. And I want you to um, praise them, you know, cheer them on as they as they perform and they uh, produce what they believe that they have practiced so hard to be their worthy gift to God this morning. Uh, We don't just get up here for a production. But it's all to worship God. And so we're training them in the ammunition of God. And so uh, I want you all to put your hands together at this time for our youth and young adults as they present to you Easter 2024. Good morning. Welcome to New Home News. We are today we are investigating the story that everyone is talking about. I have Kayla here with interesting details. Yes, Caleb. We are witnessing new home kids carrying crosses. Oh, look, here comes someone now carrying the cross. Ma'am, 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 can you please tell us why you're carrying the cross? I'm carrying a cross because Easter is around the corner. What does Easter mean? Easter means there is much more to life. It is my time to carry the cross. Jesus came to earth to prepare a place for us to him. Who is Jesus? Jesus died for our sins, paying our penalties so that we can be forgiven. Wow, we have so many questions. How did he pay for our sins? Jesus prayed for our sins by proving death could not hold us. Hold up, Caleb. I think I heard this story before. Jesus came to earth to save mankind. He did many miracles and, and many good things. Because he carried his cross and died on it just for us. I guess he was a good man, but why are these kids carrying a cross? We must carry a cross because we are his followers. Because he died, we can repent and have eternal life. Well, there you have it. The cross is not just a symbol, it is the way of life. Easter is a celebration of life. What is Easter? It's not about the eggs to hunt. It's not about a bunny. It's not about brand new clothes or candy as sweet as honey. On this day, many years ago, a man named Jesus Christ upon a cross for you and me gladly gave his life, not for our sins that we had done or crimes he must repay. He did it all for you and me, for our sins. He died that day. But that's not the end of Jesus Christ. They put him in a grave. But three days later, he rose again. Our sin debt had finally been paid. So this Easter, as you hunt for eggs, dressed up in brand new clothes, don't think about the Easter bunny. Think about why Christ arose.
have it. The Jesus, the Christ, is still behind the song. Do you think he will get out like the people are saying he will? Get out. Man, he is dead. He hung on a cross like the other two, or all three of them are D-E-A-D-D. -D -D. It just makes me wonder. <laughs> it just makes me wonder. What if he was the Son of God, and now we're sending him behind his tomb? Do you think God will punish us? Don't worry. He was not the angel, the angel of the Lord. I can't believe that Joseph gave his tomb to another man. Not too many people can afford such a place, and here comes Joseph giving his away. All this time he took to prepare his final resting place, and he gives it to someone he barely knew. I would have charged Jesus' family a monthly fee. And now the priest with the pilot asking us to guard the tomb. Like we're going to stop him, stop him from being raised from the dead. Just know, if he gets out, I'm gone. A man cannot be raised from the dead. The priest knows that those disciples are just going to try to kidnap him and say he has risen. But if Jesus did some miracles, the man, the woman with issues, hell. The blind man, hell. The man whose friends brought him to Jesus through the roof, hell. If Jesus can do all of those miracles, surely he can come back to life. It doesn't matter the reason we have been ordered to stay and guard this area. I haven't had a job in months, so I'm just grateful to be here. What if we take a ship? It took all of us to move the stone. It's just say all of us to guard it. I'm sure it is going anywhere. We do not need to be the, here the entire time. The Pharisees are just being paranoid. Sounds good to me. I'd rather go home anyway. I thought you were ready to work. I'll stay for the first shift. Deal. I'll take the second shift. Deal. I'll take the last shift. This is easy money. <laughs> The servant, your faithful follower. But yet he replied, Before the rooster crows, I will deny you. No, 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 I refuse to believe that. It's me, Lord. It's Peter. Here's my knife. I will cut off the ear of your transgressor. But he replied, what do you suppose I would deny him? The night progressed. Things got so bad. People were asking me, am I a disciple? Am I a follower of Jesus? Am I a believer? Y'all, I realized I didn't want to die. But y'all don't understand. It got worse. The crowd, the noise, the hatred, the things. <laughs> no, I'm not following Jesus. <laughs> Peter denied him. But I, I betrayed him. For five pieces of silver. For five pieces of silver, I can be bought. For 30 pieces of silver, I turned him over to the chief priest. And I, I came up with a plan. I sat at the table with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I pretended to be a friend of Jesus. I sat there as Jesus said, tonight, one of you shall betray me. And I said, surely, Rabbi, surely it's not I. And he said, it is you. He said, go and do that which you must do. And do it quickly. So I left. Yes, I left. And I went to the south to see you. In the first season, I told him, come and follow me. And for 30 pieces of silver, I'll lead you to his secret place. And when I got there, 
I walked up to Jesus. And I kissed him on his cheek. And he said, Judas, betray thou the son of man. It was a kiss. Thirty pieces. I'm still They will let us in. Who is there? I'm sorry to inform you that we have been asked not to let anyone into the tomb. But it is our wife. He is our friend. This man will not have any visitors until three days after his crucifixion. That is crazy. Move that stone. Uh, it took five of us to move the stone. It took five of us to move the stone. We cannot move it by ourselves. Mary, please, please calm yourself. Uh, he healed, he taught, 
he fellowshiped, and he loved. Then he was falsely accused. He was beaten, and he died on the cross like a human criminal. But after, I said, after three days, he rose. Yes. Yes. There is no need to cry. Why are you weeping? He's not dead.
Come on now, all over this house, can we just take a moment to worship God? Come on. Come on, that's a good place to worship him. That's a good place to open up our, our mouths and put our hands together. That's a good place. That's a real good place. Come on. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm not going to pump and prob you. Come on, out of the depths of your belly. Come on, Zion, open up your mouth and give God the fruit of your lips. Oh, God, we love you. Where will we be without you? You, t you bore our sins on that rugged cross. God, we thank you. Come on. Come on, God, we love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we bless the Lord Check. for our, our production team? Our, all of the ones that's in fine arts, can you bless the Lord for them again? Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes... Sometimes we go through life and, and oftentimes we try to find these fancy words. But sometimes it's just our thank you, Jesus. It's just our, our simple thank you, Jesus. Where would you be without the blood? Where would you be without him? As I was a young boy, as I was a young boy, I used to see my mom and dad in the car and they would just ride and cry. Tears would fall from their eyes. And they would just say, thank you, Jesus. And I laugh. I said, what is that? I want to know that Jesus. And as I got older and, and life began to happen, it, I began to sit in the classroom and I said, thank you, Jesus. I began to drive in the car and I just get a thank you, Jesus, in my spirit. I began to know and that. that the, the tears began to fall and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost would just begin to start moving and he began to start shaking things together and that thank you Jesus turned into a hallelujah and that hallelujah turned into a, a, as the people would say an old Baptist fit and then I can't contain it and then all of a sudden things begin to shift listen as you go throughout your journey Easter the resurrection story is just so that you could have a thank you Jesus the, 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 the life of Jesus is a testimony that he's still alive. And we thank God that we have the opportunity just to put on this production, just to remember what he did. Can we bless the Lord one more time? Come on. Come on, love on those babies real good. Come on, bless the Lord for them. Hallelujah. And.
Come on, give the Lord one more big hand clap of praise. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign, you reign. For you are God. God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy day are gone. I can sing to you this song. I want to say that I love you more than anybody love the Lord today. I love you, Jesus. Come on, help me sing it. I worship and adore. Just want. Lord, I love more. Come on, help us worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, Jesus. Come on, help us. I worship and adore you. Yeah. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. Hallelujah. Yeah. Say, I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore. I'm going to take time to tell you. Say, I love you. Hallelujah. I need all the worshipers to lift up your hands right there. If you really love the Lord and he's been good to you, come on, help me. Say, I love you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. I need all the folk that came to worship this morning to help us tell the story. Look at your neighbor say, Jesus where to Calvary save the red. Like you and me, that's love. Yeah, yeah. That's love. Oh. What else did they do? They hung him high. Stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. That's love. That's real love. Yeah. They hung him high. Stretched him wide. Hung his head. For me, he died. Come on, stay with me. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I need you to look somebody in the face this time. Tell them, but that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rolled again. That's love. That's love. That's love. Yeah. That's not how. The story three days later said he rose again. That's love. Hey, yeah. I gotta make sure we get the story right. We're gonna cut the music. I need to hear everybody. Jesus went to Calvary. today. Whatever you do this week, you ought to tell somebody, but that's not how the story is. That's not how the story is. Yeah. Three days later. Rose again. We're going to 
going out. That's love. That's love. That's love. That's love. That's love. That's real love. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's real, real love. Calvary, save a wretch like you and me that love. Look at somebody say, that's real love right there. That's a real love, that's what you've been searching for. Hey, hey, hey. they hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head, for you and me he died. That's love. You ain't come for sure or fashion, but you came because you got a real relationship with Jesus Christ. I need you to find one person you ain't looked at, tell them, but that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again that love. We move into the word, but every now and then you ought to get happy because of what he did on Calvary. And I shouldn't have to hoop a holly, but when you just think about how he loved your messed up self, when you think about how much he loved your flawed self, you ought to give him praise because he didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to die, but he did. He didn't have to pay the debt, but he did. I need somebody to just shout, but that's not how the story yeah. rolls again. That's love. That's love. Grab your Bibles. Run to the book of John, 29th chapter. The 20th chapter, excuse me, the 20th chapter. Oh. Lord, I'm grateful that you did. Yeah. Yeah. John chapter 20, verse number 19 through 20. I want all of you to stand because you stood to get in here. Let's stand for the word of God. Come on, let's stand for the word of God. I know. Everyone standing all over the building. John chapter 20. We got to stand because the word stands for us. You stand for the national anthem, you can stand for Jesus Christ's word. Amen. Let's read. It says in the ESV translation, on the evening of that day, the first day of the week. Somebody shout the first day. The doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. He says, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. When Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his side then the disciples were glad when they saw the lord verse 21 says then jesus said to them again peace be with you as the father has sent me even so i am sending you and jesus said this uh, and when he had said this rather he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit look at somebody real quick say neighbor I got a word for you. He can flip the script. They didn't get happy. You need to find another neighbor. Tell your neighbor whatever you're going through. It's about to change because he can flip the script. They didn't get happy. Find somebody else. Find somebody. Tell them I don't know how hard your week has been. But as for me, I get glad when I think about it. God will flip the script. Give God praise for what he's about to give you. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers, the flower thereof fades, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the children 
for the adults, for the production, to remind us to continue to rely on you, understanding that it's because of you and your power that we're able to make it through. God, we thank you for the choir with their melodious voices. We thank you for the trumpet and the players who have had the ability to think and even produce that beautiful sound. We thank you for the musicians. We thank you for the ushers. We thank you for the people who waited patiently in the foyer. We thank you for the folk that are in overflow. We thank you for you being who you've always been. And after we've seen all of this, after we've heard all of this, God, we simply want a word from you. Speak, Lord, your children are listening. I am your vessel. Play me in your key. Play me to your pace. My simple and earnest prayer is less of Lee and more of thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, all of God's children are to shout amen. Amen. Amen again. He can flip the script. Just a few months ago, I was reading this book by a brother by the name of Norman Vincent Peale. This book is called Enthusiasm Makes the Difference. In this book, he was talking about how enthusiasm is the priceless ingredient of human personality that helps one person or another achieve happiness and fulfillment. That wasn't all he said. He went further to give another quote. He said, enthusiasm is the dynamic motivator that keeps a person moving towards his or her goal. And the reality is, family, it's necessary for us to be real this morning about the reality that many of us have lost some enthusiasm already. This year seemed to start off going the way we desired for it to go. But many of you can testify, as soon as you made your entry into March, you felt your steps growing a little weaker. You wanted to start the business. You wanted to, to save the money. You wanted to be better in your uh, spiritual life. You wanted to be better in your marriage. But the reality was, it seems as though the enthusiasm is not where it used to be. I need the real folk. It's about 20 of y'all in here that's looking a little stale right now because the truth is that's the best way you know how to look. Amen. There's a few of y'all in here that can testify. I've started out with a whole bunch of zeal. I started out with a whole bunch of happiness. But at this very moment, there are some things in my life that I'm not enthused about. I want to help you today because not only did uh, Norman Vincent Peale have something to offer, but Winston Churchill had something to offer. Winston Churchill said, success is going from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. And I believe that's the problem with some of us. We've been going from problem to problem and we're slowly losing our zeal. We're slowly losing our happiness. We're slowly losing our desire to fight on and run on and see what the end's going to be. But I need you to just tap your neighbor for a second and say neighbor you can fight on and God will get you through it's interesting because Winston Churchill is not the only person who had a quote but there was a brother met by the name of Henry Ford he said you can do anything if you have enthusiasm he says enthusiasm is the yeast that makes your hopes rise to the stars what he was saying to us is when you're excited about something you always give it your best but when you're no longer excited you give it whatever is left over y'all quiet y'all acting like that when you got that brand new house you took care of that house you cleaned that house you mopped them floors and you sold off your house but after you decided you wanted another one yeah, y'all going to act funny with me today. You stopped cleaning. You had some new visitors. They had four legs and they ran all over. Matter of fact, I don't know what they look like. About six legs, I think. And they were everywhere because you stopped caring about what you had maybe it's not that maybe it's the car that you had and when you first got it you showed it off you know you put your keys on facebook you showed them how beautiful it was you got it washed every week but after you desire to get a new one you stop washing the old one and the trunk became your trash can 
I need some real folks. See, this Easter crowd acting so diddy on me. I know, I know, I know you look cute today, but I need you to be real because if you ain't going to be real, we can't mel- We can't give you the panacea for all your problems, right? You got to understand that you've got to keep your enthusiasm. And what God is saying is that the body of Christ is losing enthusiasm because there are certain things that we aren't making sure that we do. If you want the church to get its power back, we got to keep focusing on God and not on the gossip concerning P. Diddy. We got to keep our focus. And so the text says because y'all have shared every post I'm sick of it. Let this be done by 12 o'clock today. We see the disciples have lost their enthusiasm. Jesus Christ died Friday. The time of this text is Sunday morning and they have lost their enthusiasm. They are locked behind a door in fear of what men will do to them. The same men who saw Jesus walk on water. The same men who watched Jesus turn two red lobster biscuits and five pieces of tilapia into a whole church fellowship hall dinner. The same men that saw God open up deaf ears and cause the blind to see are now scared of what men can do to them. Although they know that God is real, yes, he's real. These same people are now in a state of panic. And can I tell you, child of God, I know uh, many of you get tired of me asking for the real folk, but the truth is I need the people who can always be honest that you can be a Christian and still be afraid. You can be a Christian and still be in a state of panic. You can be a Christian and still be at a point where you almost drive yourself to drink. Every now and then you got to be real about it and stop hiding your real issue. They are discouraged the man who did it all for them is now dead the text tells us that they're discouraged for three reasons y'all write this down check it he says number one they're discouraged because they're too focused on friday y'all come close he died on friday and all their focus is on is the fact that something bad has happened I was on the short bus too. Some of us spend too much of our day focused on the negative versus finding the positive so that we can keep moving forward. They're they're, they're focused on the fact that Jesus Christ has died. They're traumatizing themselves because they're playing it over and over. It was gruesome. It was bad. It was nasty. It was sad. But he says at some point you got to stop focusing on Friday. I don't know what your Friday is. Might have been the day you got a pink slip. I, I don't know when your Friday is. Might have, might have been the day that one of your friends was talking a little too slick for you. I, I don't know when your Friday was, but whatever your Friday was, you got to make up your mind that although there's a Friday, there's also a Sunday. And whenever things get bad, there's going to be a moment for things to turn around. Tell somebody it's Sunday morning. Whatever you've been dealing with, give it three days and watch God turn that thing around. Give it three days and watch God shift that thing. I wish I had somebody up in the house that wouldn't make me preach hard at a 10 o'clock hour. All of us got to get out of here and go to lunch. But look at somebody and say, in three days. Check it out. They're focused on Friday. And also their faith is fading. You can't be full of fear and faith at the same time. Their faith is fading because they're locked behind a closed door. Scared of men because they think all hope is lost concerning their master. Their faith is fading. You've been there before when you have been praying for God to pay the bill. Uh, but you're talking to the people today and they say they're going to go ahead and cut it off. You, you've been there before. You driving into the park, uh, into your driveway and you see the waterworks sign out there already saying there ain't no need of you looking for no water today. You, you've been there before when you were at your wit's end and you didn't know when God was going to show up or how he was going to show up. But I wish you'd just say what my mama would tell everybody in here. Tell him he may not come when you want him. 
but he's always on time. I'm going to get to my sermon. Here it is. You're too focused on Friday. Your faith is fading. And lastly, your fellowship is fractured. It gets hard when folk that you've always been able to count on are no longer with you. At this point, the 12 disciples are no longer 12. They're only 11. Because Judas has already run over and run off on the plug because he had a money over everything mentality. Thirty pieces of silver. <laughs> and as a result of him selling Christ over, he has now killed himself. So twelve disciples are now only eleven disciples. What is it like when you've lost someone that you love? When you lose someone or something that you love, it can cause your fellowship to be fractured because it's often in moments of grief that we'll start isolating ourselves. Y'all talk to me here. You don't want folk to tell you how to grieve and how long to grieve. You, you don't want folk to tell you that you ought to remember this and get over that and shift to this. You don't want folk that I got one real one in the house that when I lose someone I love I don't need folk talking to me but I got a word for you. God's grace is sufficient for your grief. And even when you're dealing with loss the Lord will still step in and make everything all right. I wish I had somebody that could testify up in the house that can testify I've lost some folk but God kept my mind. I've lost some folk but God kept my mental faculties. I lost some folk but I still got my job. I need you to wave your hand so you can testify to everybody around you. God will keep you in perfect peace. Won't he do it? So their faith is fading. So their fellowship is fractured. So they're focused on Friday. But God says, your future is still favored because I can restore your enthusiasm. <sighs> Somebody didn't receive it. Can you just nudge that same neighbor that's getting tired of you and say God can restore whatever you feel like you've lost? They didn't shout. Nudge that other neighbor you have not nudged and say, God can restore whatever you have lost. I don't care what it is, God can restore it. If you lost joy, God can restore it. If you lost peace, God can restore it. If you lost your hope for tomorrow, God can restore it. If you've been crying and drinking your tears for water, God can restore you. He can restore your happiness. He can restore your marriage. He can restore your family. He can restore your finances. I need somebody up in here to just shout, God, restore. Restore, restore. How do I know he can restore? Because the disciples are locked, panicking, behind a closed door and God shows up. <sighs> Y'all gonna make me work hard today. Taco Bell ain't gonna do it today. I'm gonna have to get me some Texas Roadhouse or something. They trying to make me work because they so smooshed together. God showed up anyway. God showed up and the doors was locked. ADT was on. He still showed up. He showed up on your Amazon camera. He still showed up. And the fact that he showed up tells us two things. His death on Calvary could not hold him. And doors that are closed can't keep him out. I see I'm going to have to shout all by myself. Let me teach it. Let me teach it. Maybe I can get the rest of y'all. Lean in a little closer, child of God. They killed him on Friday. But he showed up on Sunday. What does that mean? That means the devil can do the worst that he can do. But he can't take you out. All right. I 
came to tell somebody today that you've been worried about your opposition, but your haters going to hate anyway. Let them do what they're doing. God will take you higher because nothing they can say will block you from what God has for you. The death on Calvary couldn't hold them. But the doors that were closed could not keep them out. What does that mean, child of God? It means huh, that we serve the type of God that can be in any place he wants to be. Which means he's a sovereign God. What does that mean? That means he can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, if he wants, with whom he wants. Can't nothing stop him from doing what he wants. Check this out. The doors are locked. But God still shows up. Even when you don't pray the prayer, he'll still show up. Even when you don't invite him in, he'll still step on in. I wish I had at least 20 folk that can just wave your hand. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to touch nobody. If your testimony is, I ain't even prayed for it, but he gave it to me. I didn't even move, but he did it for me anyway. Let me get to my text. The disciples have lost their enthusiasm. They're no longer deciding and or desiring to disciple. They no longer want to be God's children because they're scared of what people are going to say about them. They're scared of what people are going to do to them. But God says, I don't need my children losing hope and or faith in me because I died. I want my children to know that I can restore their enthusiasm on Sunday morning. Can I tell you why you ought to come to church? Because God's trying to restore your enthusiasm. After you have been through Monday through Saturday, you ought to come to church early Sunday morning to get your enthusiasm revived. Everybody ain't clapped to that one. I know you squeezed up in the middle, but can't you just nudge one of them and say, come to church next Sunday? It's interesting. We live in a world now where folk do everything on Sunday morning but give God praise. Oh, Lord have mercy. Run down Facebook, everybody picking out white clothes for the brunch, but ain't picked out no clothes for Sunday morning worship. You can come to 8 o'clock and still go to brunch, but you need to come to church because this is the place where God will revive your enthusiasm. Here it is. The disciples are there. Their enthusiasm has been lost. But God says, I got favor for you because I'm going to restore what you've lost. He said, the first thing that must be done is that my presence must be revealed. Somebody shout presence. Shout reveal. God says, I'm always revealing myself, but I need you to start looking for me in what you're going through. It's easy to see God with everything going right. It gets difficult to see God when everything's going wrong. And what God is saying is that my children have to learn how to see me in everything you go, in the mountains and in the valleys, in the good times and in the bad times, in the sad moments and in the glad moments, sunshine or rain. Y'all heard that, Frankie Beverly. I saw it right there. You got to see God in everything. And so what God is saying is, uh, 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 once you see me in your situation, you'll understand that, that, that I'm still with you even when it gets difficult. He says, it, it might seem like there's no life in it, but I'm still there. So that's all the life you need. God says, I, I need you to understand, not only can I revive it, but I also need you to understand that you ain't the first person that's going through what you're going through. The very thing that the enemy wants you to believe is that you're the only one. God says you are not the only one. He said, matter of fact, open your Bible, run to Job. Job lost everything he had. He lost his family. He lost his friends. He lost his funds. He lost his mental faculties. And what we find out, family, is although he lost everything he had, he still gave God the praise. It's interesting because right there in Job chapter 23, verse 8 through 10, he said, Behold, I go forward, but God is not there. He says, I go backward, but God is not there. He says, I go to my left where God used to work with me, but God is not there. He says, I turn to the right hand, but I do not see God because he is not there. But I thank God from verse number 8 through 9, he was looking for God, but something clicked in his mind around verse number 10. He said, But God knows the way that I take. And when God has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. What Job was saying, is even when you can't find God God can still find you even when you can't trace God you can still trust God because God will show up on your behalf on your on your behalf his presence must be revealed I like it because he wants us to know uh, that, that not only must his presence be revealed he says but his peace must be released uh, somebody shout peace, peace. shout released 
All right. Um, what I love about God is God always knows what you need when you need it. And so they're panicking. He shows up. And the first thing Jesus says is my peace. Or rather he says, peace be with you. That's how you know God is in the room. It's when God opens his mouth and he says exactly what you need to hear. He walks into a room full of panicking children of God and he says, peace be with you. The word peace is recorded in the Bible over 429 times. But what we've learned is that there are four types of peace, four types of peace. The first peace is a peace uh, that is the peace of conflict. Romans 5 and 1, it says, therefore, since we have not been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It talks about the reality that once you're saved, no longer are you at conflict with God. You have conflict peace. But then there's another one. It says it's conversational peace. This is the peace in Genesis 37 and 4. It says, but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they healed him and could not speak peacefully to him. What he's saying and alluding to there is that when you're really peaceful, you watch what comes out your mouth. Because when you at war with me, you're going to come at me sideways. But if we at peace, you're going to come correctly. He says there's conflict peace, there's conversational peace, but then there's conduct peace. He said because it's not just what you say, it's also how you act. Yeah, yeah. I heard y'all how you say it. I like that. I'll take that. I'll add that there. That, that, that's on you. He says it's how you act. Conduct peace is right there in the text. It is Romans 14 and 19. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. What he's saying is, is that if you're not adding to my life, then probably we got problems. Because if you're peaceful, we're building one another up. Somebody shout embrace, embrace, embrace. It's more than just allowing people to be who they are. It's you trying and attempting to make people better. And the reality is family, if the church can get conduct peace right, the church would be better than what it is right now. Can I tell you the biggest issue with church is that folk don't know how to treat folk in the pews? Can I tell you the biggest issue with church folk and the church is the fact that we don't know how to love one another properly? We got to get some conduct. Peace. If you're not building me up, shut your mouth. And shut up everybody else's mouth that ain't building me up. Then he says, not only is there conflict peace, not only is there conversational peace, not only is there conduct peace, what's the last one? Y'all can read, help me. Calming peace. In the book of Mark, there's a moment where Jesus Christ is asleep on the ship. Yeah, he's, he's on the cruise and he fell asleep and the disciples came to him and said, hey Jesus, you, you got to wake up. You got to do something about this. We're in a problematic circumstance. The text says Jesus wakes up groggy, looks at the sea and says, peace be still. And the winds begin to cease and the waves begin to be calm. What God is saying is that although I can give peace, uh, there are some other pieces that y'all have to exhibit. And he said, when you really got peace, uh, your peace will keep you. You calm no matter how chaotic life can be. Your peace will keep you from losing your cool no matter how you really feel. Somebody shout calming peace. What's interesting about this is that what we see in the text is not only the fact that they have peace because God spoke it into their lives, but we understand that the only folk that can really have peace are the, peace, the people who have proof. When you have proof of what God can do, you don't let chaotic situations make you crazy. When you have proof of what God can do, it doesn't matter how troubling the storm may be, you can stand still and know that he is God. When you got proof that God is able to do it, you ain't worried because if he did it before, he can do it. I wish I had somebody up in here that can testify, I'm always going through something, but I got peace about myself. I don't lose my head because I know God is still able to pull me out of what I've been in. Check this out. Nudge your neighbor. Tell him, wake up. 
Tell them connectors on the way. Here it is. He says, you got to make sure, family, that his presence is revealed to you. You got to make sure that you receive or rather his peace is released to you. But lastly, third point for somebody, you got to make sure that you receive his power. Because his power must be received. God says, I keep trying to give you what you need, but your arms aren't open. Because you think you know everything, God can't fix it for you. Because you're trying to figure it all out by yourself, God can't work it out for you. You keep talking yourself out of the blessings God's trying to give you. You keep talking yourself out of the breakthrough God's trying to give you. He keeps dropping it in your lap and you keep letting it hit the flow because your hands aren't open and ready to receive. I wish I had at least 50 folk out of all the folk up in this whole church campus to just lift up your hands and say, God, pour it again, pour it again. I, I won't drop it this time. I I'm ready to receive whatever you have for me. Well, look at the text. The text says, that Jesus does, or rather does, something to them. And then they receive something from him. I want you to get this. Open your Bible or your Bible app, whichever one you got. He says, after I had shown them my hands because I had to reveal and release some peace. After I had given them the proof, then I had to breathe on them. It's interesting, family. He says, he breathed on them and said to them, help me read, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, now, I know, I know, you came for a he died meeting. I mean, you, you, you don't want nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. But I need you to know something. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you ain't got no victory. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you won't be able to take a licking and keep on ticking. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't have the power that you need to overcome the enemy. And I believe I'm talking at least 75 folk up in here that can shout, I've got the power of the Holy Ghost. Now what's interesting is this. This is not the first time that Jesus has breathed on some folk. In the book of Genesis around chapter 2, the text says that he breathed his breath inside the nostrils of man. And when he breathed his breath inside the nostrils of man, the man began to have life in his body. That was Genesis chapter 2, but over here in John chapter 20, the Lord said, I breathed on him and he received, he received the Holy Ghost. I love it because when you look at it, there are similarities, but at the same time, there are some differences. When he breathed into the man's nostrils, uh, he got physical life, uh, but when, uh, when he breathed into the nostrils, uh, or rather when he breathed on the man, uh, he got spiritual life y'all ain't with me yet see can I tell you the problem with the church today is we love the Lord and uh, he heard our cry and he pitied our every groan and long long as we live uh, and troubles rise we hasten to his throne but many of us still don't have we still have not activated the Holy Spirit in our lives it's the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you that'll make you treat your neighbor right it's the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you that'll help you love everybody
everybody that's hating on you. It's the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you that'll help you have power in your weakest hour. I need you to turn to somebody for the last time and tell them, say, neighbor, whatever you do, you got to receive. I said, you got to receive the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that'll make you walk right. It's the Holy Ghost that'll make you talk right. It's the Holy Ghost that'll make you do right. And that's the problem with us today. We don't have the Holy Ghost and allowing him to move in our lives. But if you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to wave your hand. If you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to show some sign. If you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to leap for joy. If you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to get off your behind and act like you got power, power in your life. I'm so glad as I leave y'all now that God is able to shift the script. He'll flip that thing. He'll turn it around. How do you know that the Lord will flip that thing? Because the disciples in verse number 19, they were panicking. But in verse number 22, they had power. How do you know, Reverend, that God will, that he'll flip the script? Because one Friday, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame but I'm so glad that they hung him high y'all gonna help me be Easter now stretch him wide he hung his head and for you and me he died he died died didn't he die look at your neighbor say he died to the earth <laughs> begin to reel and rock like a drunken man he died until the stars fell from their silvery sockets he died until the moon its pressure got high and it got a bloody nose he died until the S-U-N refused to shine he died didn't he die but early y'all ain't with me yet early I need y'all to help me preach this thing put on your best preacher voice and shout early early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands and because he got up I've got power to triumph over the enemy. I've got power to take me further than I've ever been before. I lied to y'all. I need you to nudge one more person and say, neighbor, there's a word for you here. Whatever you're dealing with, be not dismayed. Whatever, whatever, whatever whatever betide you cause God will won't he take care of you won't he flip the script won't he turn it around won't he make your frown look like a smile ain't he able have you tried him ain't he alright if you know he is you ought to lift up your hand and give him praise because he lives you can face tomorrow because he lives all your fears are gone open your mouth and thank Jesus for dying for you and rising for you give him praise y'all ain't noisy give him praise Doors of the church are open. Listen to me. God says everybody want to hear that he died. But nobody want to be real about the fact that you know you're losing your enthusiasm. 
This is the Sunday that everybody try to get to somebody church. And the truth be told, there's some folk in here who can testify. I've lost my enthusiasm for God because of church folk sometimes. And today is the day you get your enthusiasm back. It ain't about them. It's all about him. Whether it's your marriage. Whether it's your ministry. Whether it's your money. No matter what it is, you can get your enthusiasm back. You got one decision to make. And that's to get to know him again. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody who needs to make a decision today. Right now is your moment. Today is your day. Help me sing it. Nothing better say, nothing better than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up. You want to know him. Get to know him. Don't wait for tomorrow. Hallelujah. Come on, there's more decisions. Nothing better say than knowing Jesus. He will. He gets turn your life around. You want to know him. Get to know him. Don't wait for tomorrow. Y'all put your hands together for all these saints that are coming. Come on, grab those two chairs over there, doctor. Say, come on. Come on. Yeah. Today just come. Oh. Look down your road, tell somebody. All you got to do is come on. Right now, today just come. Yeah. One more time, all over the house. Let me hear you. Come on. No matter what you're dealing with, this is your moment. Just come. You might be weary, wounded, and sad, but I promise you that the Lord will make you glad. Just come. No matter what you're dealing with, I want you to get your enthusiasm back today. Just come. He will pick you up and turn your life around. He will. Oh. He You ought to know him. Get to know him. Don't wait for tomorrow. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble. Have to cry sometimes. Lay awake at night. Yeah, that's all right. I heard him say, Jesus, I need a church to help me. After a while, put in your head. in the furnace long time ago Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego they weren't worried this I know I heard them say Jesus after a while Put in your head. Yes, 
answer. Yeah, cut the music. Trouble in my way. Have to cry sometimes. Oh, 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 so much trouble. Have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. Tears streaming down my eyes. Tears streaming down my eyes. Tears streaming down my eyes. Yeah, but that's all right. I heard him say, Jesus. I heard him say, Jesus. I heard him say, Jesus. Yeah, I heard him say, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. 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 Anybody here ever called his name? Anybody know him fix it? Lift your hand all over the building. Say Jesus, 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 somebody here need a healing, somebody here need a way maker, what it fix her, what it fix her, what it fix her, yeah, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Anybody here know him? He's a rock in a weary land. He shot out in the time of a storm. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. I don't know about you. I love the Lord. Early, early, one Sunday morning, he got up. Anybody know him? Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus! Jesus! Somebody said Jesus! Somebody said Jesus! Somebody said Jesus! Oh, I have to walk. Good morning, everyone. We have. We we have. Good morning, Pastor Walker and New Home family. We have several people who are coming to um, join our family. For a Christian experience, could you please stand as I call your name? Ashley Goldsberg, coming from Christian experience. Sister Williams, Williams last name, Rodarius Wickerson, Timber Robertson. We we also have the following individuals who are coming for baptism: Reagan Wickerson and. Carlin, Kaylin Moore. We have the following individuals who are coming for prayer. Jerry Baker and Tracy Baker. Kamisha Carlisle. Uh, Sister Powell. And Tatiana Hooks and family. And that's all we have. Amen. Let's give God praise for you. Amen. Give God praise for them. Y'all turn this way. Turn this way. Uh, we praise God for the harvest. Right, New Home? Can we give God praise one more time? Amen. I want to, I want to make sure uh, that we know that this is not by way of happenstance. God does everything on purpose. God always directs and orders your steps and your movements before you even know that you're going to make them. 
And so we're grateful today that y'all are desiring to be a part of this church family. We're so grateful that you see enough God in me to be your pastor. And as, we, as I follow Christ, you follow me. I believe that's how God has ordained it to be. And I'm even more excited because you decided to come. And I know that you have gifts. I know that you have talents. I know that you have intellect. I know that you're doing great things in the secular. We want you to bring it into the sanctuary. We don't desire any more spectators. We want participators. And as we work together, we can make God's kingdom be enlarged. Amen. And so it's my prayer that you all feel the warm welcome. If you don't yet, new home, what do we say? Do y'all feel it now? They were loud. That was all on your backside. You felt that? Amen. So we're excited that you came to be part of our family. I don't know where you're going to take them. Uh, but y'all going to have to figure that out. <laughs> If y'all got to use, if they got to use my office, they can. If y'all have to, that's fine. Uh, you can let them in the office for me. Those of you who came for Christian experience and Christian experience only, you can now leave with assimilation. Wave your hand, Sister Pruitt and Sister Seaboard. Y'all can go in that direction. Come on, give God praise for them. Y'all get y'all purses. I pray you got your purses and stuff. Amen. Get your purses, your wallets, your crossbodies, all of that. Amen. Because... Ain't no Easter blessings for nobody in the pew. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Reagan, baptism? Okay, all right. Go ahead, sweetie. All right, we have those for baptism. I want to talk to you all uh, first. Who's for baptism? Raise your hand. Kayla? That's... I thought you said... Okay. Okay, all right. That's fine. That's fine. Well, I got some questions I want to ask you. And um, I want you to just give me your true answer. The Bible says when you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord, then you are saved. So you're saved before you go to the waters of baptism, but we're still going to take you. Amen. All right. So I want to know, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. All right. Do you believe that he hung, bled, and died for your sins? Yes. All right. Do you believe that he's coming back again? Yes. And will you serve him for the rest of your life? Yes. Amen. Come on, give God praise for her. This is a big move. This is a big step. And I want you to know that this will drastically change the trajectory of your life. This is a moment. I want to be honest. I want to be as, 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 as truthful and transparent as possible. When you make this decision, the devil is going to be on your tracks. He literally wants to take you out before you become all that God wants you to be. So it's imperative for you to always remain focused on God, no matter what's going on in your life. And as long as you stay focused, everything going to be all right. There's a story of a man who was trying to walk on water with Jesus Christ. As soon as he took his focus off of him, he began to slip, sink, and fall. But as soon as he cried out to Christ, he got his footing back, and they walked back to the ship. So even when you fall, Donna McClurkin says a saint is just a sinner who fell down but got up. So keep on getting up. I want to pray this prayer with you. You repeat after me. Everyone who believes in the power of prayer, please stretch your right hands towards the altar. Repeat after me. Say, Father. Father. Forgive me. Forgive me. Father. Father. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Make me right. Make me right. Make me over. Make me over. And I will. And I will. Follow you. Follow you. Father. Father. I love you. I love you. I can't make it. I can't make it without you. Without you. I need you. I need you. So do. So do. What only you. What only you. Can do. Can do. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise for her. Amen. Y'all can do better than that. The Bible says when one soul is saved, the angels in heaven rejoice. Amen. All right, we thank God for you. I want you to go that same direction with the simulation team. They want to get some information from you and or I'm not sure which way they went. You can go this way. Go that way. Amen. Come on one more time. Give God praise for her. Uh, let's turn towards the, I want to turn towards the audience. I want y'all to slide down for me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't
If you believe in the power of prayer, we ask that you stretch your right hand of faith to those that are at the altar. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we come to you at this hour. Father, thanking you for who you are. You are God and God alone. There is no other God like you, Father. So, Father, we pray now for these, your people at the altar at this time, Father, that come needing uh, one thing, Father, and some needing another, God. But we know that you know all things, Father, for you're all knowing, you're all seeing, you're ever present, God, you're ever present help. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray on the behalf of those here now, God, asking that you would step in, heal, set free, and deliver, Father. Father, will you cover them with your blood, Father, will you encounter? Absolute them with your love, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Father, we pray, God, that they will walk in liberty, Father, that they will walk in freedom, Father, that they will walk in boldness, Father. There shall be nothing missing, nothing lacking, nor anything broken, Father. Father, you for you've been given a name, Father, that is above every name. So, Father, we come against every spirit of depression, every spirit of suicide, every spirit of cancer, every spirit that that is not like you, Father. Sickle cell, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, believing that you are a healer, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives that they, and we decree and declare that they shall live and not die. They shall walk in boldness. They shall walk in deliverance. They shall walk in peace, Father. May your Shekinah glory rest on them. In the name of Jesus, we pray now, God, that all these things will be done and more in the name of Jesus, Father. We, your people we stand in agreement with what heaven has already said God knowing that it is so and it shall it be father in the name of Jesus so God now as they we pray over them and as they leave this altar father we pray that they will walk in every in every divine plan that you have for them in the name of Jesus father we know you to be a healer we know you to be our savior father and today on this resurrection Sunday father because you got up they can too father and they can walk in all that you've called them to be. May they go in peace. May they never lack or need anything, Father. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So today is a good day. It's Easter Sunday. And uh, we have three candidates who uh, went for baptism today. And we want to present them with their certificates. Deacon Post there, you looking over there. I need you. Amen. Amen. Stay focused on the pastor right now, not the father. Amen. <laughs> we want to give these certificates to these young people. We want to make sure that they know that they are special and that they've made a good decision for the sake of Christ. We're getting ready to go. Uh, but Sister Taylor Shackelford, can you come forward? Sister Taylor Shackelford. Is she coming? Is she over here? Mm -hmm. Ashley? Give me that one. Okay. Yeah, we ain't need the Sunday school book up here, though. Sister Ashley, come here. I'm just going to take a picture. Y'all make some noise for Sister Ashley Calhoun. Amen. Sister Taylor, how you doing? Y'all make some noise for Sister Taylor. Amen. Sister McKenya Harris. There she is. Come on, make some noise for McKenya. All right, amen. Come on, give God praise for her. 
Amen. Did I, did I miss anything? I didn't miss anything. Uh, hold on real quick. All right. Oh, there he is. Didn't miss nothing, right? Uh, all right. So I got a big announcement I want to make, and I need y'all to help me. Um, there's this church by the name of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Prattville, Alabama, and they just called Reverend Jonathan Gilbert to be their pastor. Make some noise! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Come on, y'all make some noise for him. My Lord, my Lord. Won't he do it, Gilbert? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come here, Doc. You just stay right there. I want to be on your height. Turn around. You stay right there. I want to be. Amen. We finna pray for him. Y'all stretch your hand towards the man of God. Father God, we thank you now for what you're about to do in his life. We thank you now, Father God, for how you're going to use him to save so many souls. We thank you now, Father God, for the power that you're giving him to walk in authority. We're thanking you now, Father God, for the ability, Father God, to study, to show himself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the words of truth. We thank you, God, for what you're about to do in the ministry of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, Prattville, Alabama. We thank you, God, because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the good things that you have in store for him. We thank you, dear God, because you're going to take them from glory to glory. Faith to faith. We thank you God. Because you're going to blow his mind. As long as he keeps his hand in your hand. We thank you God. For what you're about to do. And we won't wait until the battle is over. But we'll shout. We'll shout. We'll shout. We'll shout. We'll shout before he even gets there. Open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Open up your mouth and shout glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, some of y'all don't know how to shout because you're waiting for it to be done before you get loud about it. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all, all he's done for somebody else, I'll shout for him because that's me going to be next. It's going to come my way because he did it for him. He can do it for you. Come on, give him the best praise you can give him.
I just want you to know how godly proud I am of you. You waited on God and you ain't listened to the mess everybody else had to say. And now God is moving in your life and I am proud of you, man of God. And I believe God is going to blow your mind. I am so proud of you, man. I'm so proud of you. We got to get out of here. Come on, before we get out of here, let's just cover both of our pastors in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for the laboring and the suffering, Father. Father, we thank you that you've called them for such a time as this to lead your people. Spirit of God, go before them, Father. When the going gets tough, Father, when the people aren't acting right, when the money... Father, we thank you that there shall be nothing missing, nothing lacking. Father, Father, we pray now that your spirit will rest, rule, and abide upon them, Father. We thank you, God, that the people will come in, Father, to lift them up, Father, as Aaron and her did for Moses, Father. We thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We come against every word, curse, every lie, Father. We come against every, uh, every attack from the enemy, Father. Their family shall live and not die, pray, church. Their family and their money, Father, Father, they won't go through financial struggle, but, Father, we thank you and we believe father that you would take care of them in the name of the lord jesus father we thank you for a pastor that will pour into his associates and then send them out father father we thank you for his humility father keep them now in the name of the lord jesus we pray all these things and more in jesus name amen amen hallelujah come on give the lord a hand clap of praise Hallelujah. Come on, everybody standing all over the room. Everybody standing. We're going home. Were you blessed today? Come on, put those hands together for Jesus one more time. I still see some of y'all sitting down. Y'all must want to pass it to preach again. Um, I just, I'm coming back because we're headed to, I'm headed to uh, Hainville, Alabama. I think that service, what time is it? 1 30? 2 o'clock? Hainville, Alabama, First Baptist. Y'all pray for me as we go there. Um, I'm overwhelmed with emotion because people don't know what it's like to go through a pastoral search. It can have you questioning yourself and questioning God. And there's plenty of people who can tell you where you need to go and what you need to do. But I'm so grateful that he held fast to God. Can y'all just extend your right hand towards heaven? We praying, we getting out of here. Did y'all learn anything today? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen, all that our ears have heard. We're grateful, dear God, for the moments of celebration. We thank you for the information. And we, God, we declare and decree that there should be application in our lives. Continue to cover each of us in our going and our coming. Let us know, Father God, that you're always near and will never leave us nor forsake us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power forever and evermore. All of God's children ought to shout amen. 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 Hug somebody. Tell them we don't normally stay this late, but today is Easter. Tell them you love them.